Last year at this time, I was talking to you about the fool archetype. Everyone has access to all the archetypes and they all move in a circle. Some say that the journey begins with the fool and ends with the king. And if there ever was a time that we all need to find that king archetype energy, it's now. Stay tuned and I'll show you how. Hi, it's Laura Giles with Pan Society. If you're interested in modern animism, I hope that you are exploring and enjoying our channel. If you find anything that you like, please hit that thumbs up, share, or subscribe button as that's a way that you can show us a little love. You can also donate on our website at www.pansociety.net to help keep us going. So the king, or if we wanna keep it gender neutral, we can call it the ruler. Kings and queens do have different energies, but we're not really talking about the masculine feminine aspects of this, but really the leader energy, so we can just think of it as the ruler. So let's look at some of the fairy tale kings as their reflection of real life made super simple, aren't they? In the emperor's new clothes, we have a vain ruler. Some unscrupulous weavers come along, promising to make him wonderful clothes that only smart people can see. And they charge him a ton of money and present him with nothing but they tell him that they're exquisite garments. And because of the king's vanity and fear of being seen as stupid, he pretends to see them and parades around in front of all of his people naked. Nobody wants to appear stupid, so they go along with it. Only a child who has no guile is willing to call that out and say, hey man, you're naked. <laughs> so all the archetypes have a high side and a low side. When the energy is healthy, it's flowing, strong, balanced, and positive. And when it's too much or too little, it's in the shadow. So it might be present, but it's not an asset. And I might have a lot of warrior, rebel, or sage energy, but if it's not healthy, so what? We see a lot of shadow kings in life, don't we? Maybe it's the teacher who rules over her class through intimidation and fear, demanding respect, although none is shown. Or maybe it's the boss who wants so badly to be liked that he's let all kinds of nonsense go, so morale and productivity is really poor. Or it could be the parent who delegates all the housework and caretaking of the children to the spouse or the oldest child. A title only makes someone a king in name only. True ruler energy comes with maturity and life experience because the king isn't just the king. He draws on the energy of teacher, creator, protector, delegator, administrator, sage, and so much more. His biggest job isn't to be admired and waited on, it's to serve. And the king uses his power to serve. If he doesn't have wisdom, care, or a grip on his own ego, he can't be a good provider, or caretaker, or delegator. Another aspect of the king is the relationship to the people. It's the people's responsibility to vet the king so that he remains uncorrupted. And many cultures had rules in place that required that if the king broke his faith with the people through corruption, weakness, or poor decision making, he could be challenged. And if he's guilty, he's overthrown. And this is the part of um, the cycle of life to assure the health of the kingdom. So we're in all of this together. The kingdom is all of human experience. The king is the one who presides over it. So if we're talking about our own lives as our kingdoms, we need this king within to act as mindfulness with mindfulness and wisdom. The unwise, impulsive, defensive person often reacts to a challenge of their authority with fear so they can, withhold, um, so they can hold on to their position. And that's pre precisely, I can't talk today. <laughs> that is precisely the time to be that child in the audience as the naked pompous king walks by. Call yourself out. Be the sovereign in your own life. And if you aren't acting in kindness and strength and moving towards peace, you're probably moving towards tyranny and oppression because of your need to control. So, so stop. Think about that as you move through your own life. Where you wield power in the world, um, the same thing applies. You might think, I have no power, but you do. When you choose to text and drive, hoard toilet paper, or hurl insults at somebody, those are choices of how you move in our shared kingdom, and they ripple out. When you choose to be kind, think of others, care for animals and nurture plants, those are choices of how you move in our shared kingdom too. And those acts ripple outward and impact others often in ways you can't see. Remember that you are always the king of your life, but you may not be the king in any given situation, even if you have the title. 
There's a man-made authority that comes from titles, positions, birth order, and things like that. And then there's a natural authority that comes from life experience. People always know who the natural leader is. And a wise person knows that leadership isn't just about power, but wisdom. At no time in history has this uh, been so obvious as now as the coronavirus explodes around the world. Every time one person makes an unnecessary run outside and violates social distancing, we're all at risk. Each of us is a little king right now who matters so much in how we get through this. We can be the shadow king who rules with selfishness and does things because we can, or we can be healthy kings who act from service, wisdom, and peace. None of us can do this alone. Even if 10 good kings are consistently kind, it only takes one bad one to wipe us all out. So don't be that one. Your sovereignty matters. The animist world is a connected relational world, so we all got to use our sovereignty wisely. So thanks for tuning in, and um, I'd love to hear how you are doing that. Send me a comment. Ciao.